Okay, welcome to SVU Pod, especially heinous. I'm Gabe. I'm Tasha. Tasha. We are on season six, episode 10, Haunted. We are. Gabe is really disappointed that this isn't about ghosts. I was, I, yep. <laughs> I was also like half, but not really expecting the vibe of, remember that episode where there was that pregnant lady, but she was divinely pregnant or something they're like there's no dna in the baby but it's fucking jesus dna or whatever and stabler's like i'm catholic and he's Remember? like I'm, I'm really sick and then she and then he wasn't anymore oh yeah and he's like i've got i've got like a pretty bad cold do you and he's like <laughs> turn around <sighs> yeah and then they're like what and then we didn't go that route svu yeah all right here we go and we're starting this okay yeah season six episode 10 haunted the opening scene. Woo! <laughs> in the opening scene, Benson and Toots are in heaven and they have fucking STDs. <laughs> but up <laughs> there, say, genital awards are just dipping dots, so it's fine. <laughs> um, pause. Uh, join the Patreon to make that make sense. <laughs> okay. Opening scene, Benny and Toots are in a squad car. They're on a stakeout. The perp hasn't shown up yet, so they're about to call it a night. Also, I love the hoodie that Benny is wearing. I don't know if you walk, clocked it, but I was like, Tasha <gasps> I would did. love I did. I clocked yeah. it. I thought yeah. you would love that. I was like, that would look the, so good on Tasha. She would buy it. She okay. was wearing a little vest, and I didn't like the vest. The vest? I just saw. I thought it was a multicolored hoodie. Oh, no. I Well, maybe I'm wrong. I thought it was a zip-up. So I just saw like a, like a thin little puffer vest. And I was like, what are you doing? What is this new look? No, when she ran into the b- bodega, maybe she took it off. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, now I have to When go she back. got out of the car to run in, I just saw the hoodie. Okay, anyways. Also, this scene, you can tell that it's early morning. So they have been sitting in the car overnight, all night. Yeah. Toots goes to get them another cup of coffee at the bodega because it just opened. And Benny calls Stabler to let him know they're packing it up. Inside the bodega, there's this like teeny tiny little kid counting change one by one. And the clerk is like, oh, my fucking God. He's like, two dollars and two cents, two dollars. And then, it was so cute. Then two dudes walk in and Toots is kind of suspicious of them. I think because he recognizes them as the perp they were looking for. I think they were like watching the bodega. Remember how he was like, man, he hasn't hit yet. So, you know, it's morning now. I didn't even put that together. Yeah. Anyways, that's what I was thinking, that they were watching the bodega. The reason, the, I thought it was just because he's an expert fucking detective who mm-hmm. saw the guy, read him, and then stepped yeah. in front of the boy to block him. Right. Yeah, so Toots walks over to the counter and puts himself between the little kid and the two dudes. Then this fucking guy pulls out like a little Uzi or whatever the fuck. Like an AK. And demands the money from the... No, AKs are the big long ones. This was like a short... I think it was an Uzi. Was I'm it? pretty okay. sure. And anyway, it was a semi-automatic. I like how both yeah. of us think we know anything about... I know. <laughs> It could have been a fucking broom handle for all I know. And I'm like, ah, that's an Uzi. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just his fingers. And I'm like, oh, my God, he's got a silencer on that. <laughs> Stupid. Pew, pew, pew. Yeah. He's like, oh, my God, he's shooting. I, I heard bullets. I heard shots. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. Okay. One dude pulls out a gun, probably an Uzi, maybe an AK-47. We don't know. Maybe an umbrella. He demands money from the register. It might be an umbrella. It could be his fingers. Back outside in the car with Benson, we hear shots coming from the bodega. She calls it into the dispatch and runs towards the door. Glass explodes and she takes cover behind a lamppost. She tells dispatch that there are plain clothes detectives on the scene. So fucking don't go in there and just shooting, you know, Mm. which you shouldn't do anyways, but whatever. Right. You know what, though? Let me say it. No, no, no. Maybe maybe she said that because Toots has a gun. And she didn't want them to go in and go, that guy's got a gun and shoot him. That Yeah. Benson gets inside and sees that everyone except the little boy has been shot. He's oh, he's so cute and tiny and he's huddled down on the fucking ground like with the little hands up. Mm. So she finds Toots. He's been shot in the left side of his chest and he's unconscious. Benson grabs some napkins and applies pressure and tells him to stay with her. And she's like, stay with me, baby. Oh. I was I like, know. oh, my God, no. But also, Benny is starting to do this super flippy hair look, and it's adorbs. Toots, mm. no. No, Toots. But look at my hair. <laughs> All right, cut to the hospital. Toots is being wheeled in a gurney to the OR. He's in critical condition and is in shock from all the blood loss. Benson's running alongside him, asking the doctor's questions, and the doctor grabs her by the shoulders to be like, stop, you can't go any further. He'll let her know as soon as he knows anything. She asks the doctor if he's going to be okay, but he doesn't answer. So this is bad. 
Mm-hmm. The squad shows up. Benson is worried because they won't tell her what's really going on. She also feels really guilty for not watching for the perps. And Stabler hugs her and he's like, dude, it's not your fault. How many times have you gone in to get coffee for us and I'm not washing your back? They were just trying to get coffee. That's it. Benson says she doesn't know what happened. She heard shooting. She went in. Everyone was dead except the little boy in Toots. But the kid didn't see anything because Toots had him blocked. Kragen tells the rest of the squad to go to work the scene with CSU, but Munch really wants to stay with his BFF and partner, Toots. So Kragen's going to do all that with Benson and Stabler. Benny is going to contact Toots' family, and Kragen tells her where to find Toots' contact info, but he's like, get changed first. She's fucking covered in blood. Toots' blood. And also, his only next of kin is his son. Mm -hmm. Benson knocks on Toots' son's door. She asks if he's quasi Tutuola, and he's like, well, I go by Ken Randall now, my mom's last name. This is actor, director, and writer Ernest Waddell. We first met him in season four as some other butthole, but from now on, he is the one and only Lil Toots. Lil Toots. He was also in a handful of episodes of The Wire. He's a major babe, too, by the way. He is a babe. She tells him that there was a shooting and that Toots was injured and he's in surgery. Ken wants to know if Toots asks for him. Benson's like, well, he's unconscious. Ken says it's been a long time since he's seen him and they aren't really close. Benson's like, well, you know, you're the only one listed as next of kin and I think Toots would want you to be there. His son is really kind of like, I mean, I guess he doesn't react the way that you would expect a son to react. So you can tell that they don't have much of a relationship. And Toots mentioned recently that he was going to call his son after the fucking Waco shit when they saw the kids. And he's like, I'm going to go home and I'm going to call my kid. I don't really talk to him much, but. Yeah. Outside the bodega, press is everywhere, and they're trying to interview Cregan as he and Stabes plow through the crowd to the crime scene. They mm-hmm. want to know if Toots shot an unarmed kid, and Cregan just responds with no comment, crosses the police line, and heads in. One of the bodies is wheeled out on a stretcher. CSU is inside working on the scene. One of the guys is still inside the door on the floor. Like, it's it's immediately after. Yeah. Craig and Stabler step over the guy as they walk in. Oh, just going <laughs> to squeeze right by you. Craig gets right to it and tells Rip Roaring Rowdy Ryan O'Halloran that the press is saying <laughs> Toot shot an unarmed kid. And he goes, tell me that's not the truth. Before we get super into it, okay, I, I thought it was going to go down this this road and it ends up not. But I was like, Toots pulled a gun out when two dudes walked in to rob the place and one of them started shooting. I don't understand. Immediately, I'm like, I don't understand why they're focused on this other guy getting shot when the gunman killed or seriously injured everyone except the little kid in this tiny space. Like yeah. they're in this tiny space and he had to make a decision when somebody was open firing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the guy standing immediately behind him got shot, you know? I, a lot of this was really weird. Like they're all sh- like later when she, he's like, I fucked up with Trisha. I'm like, you, you actually didn't at all. No. And the way like yeah. her being an addict isn't. The, I'll, I'll get into it. Go ahead. Rip, roar and rowdy. Ryan O'Hara. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could recognize him so I could do that stuff, too. <laughs> He's just the guy that looks like he was chiseled out of marble that's going to be on the crime scene that they talk to. He's the standard, very attractive white man. O'Halloran says they only found one gun for the shooter, and it looks Mm. like the other guy didn't have one. CSU Captain Jude's side butt bumps O'Halloran and his fucking crazy jawline out of the way and gives Mm -hmm. the scene debrief. The cashier was shot twice by the guy with the Mac-10 gun. Oh, it was a Mac-10. (laughs) Obviously, we should have known that. There is blood spatter that suggests that in response, Toot shot the guy with the gun, then shot the unarmed dude in the chest, killing him instantly. Craigan wonders if it was a stray bullet or ricochet, but CSU Judy already has a pretty good idea that based on where Toots was and where the bullet entered, that it was clearly an intentional shot. Stabler, who shouldn't be speaking on any of this, snaps at Judy. There's no way Toots would have shot that kid unless he was packing. Not unless he was headed to Cancun for spring break and was packing. <laughs> Not unless his wife had had enough, asked him to move out, shoved a suitcase at him and started packing. <laughs> a suitcase, eh? <laughs> suitcase. I knew I knew you weren't going to laugh at the normal part of the joke. Ugh. Anyway, Stabler, you shoot people all the time. So he's like, <laughs> you don't get to I'll be like. Still, I'll never get over him kicking down a door, straight face, shooting a guy without even knowing who was where in the room. Zero hesitation. And he's like, what's wrong with what Toots did? I don't get it. This doesn't make sense. I'm surprised he didn't shoot more people in here. <laughs> he should have. 
Jude's has the answers she knew she would need to have and tells him she did a gunshot residue test on the other guy and there was no evidence of a firearm. It was a possibility that he wasn't involved in the robbery. Deep sighs mm -hmm. all around. Craig and Stabler press noses together for the rest of their conversation. Craig in hot breath goes, the media is going to go crazy, bud. When he went crazy, Stabler went, went and sucked, in, <laughs> sucked in the R. <laughs> <laughs> and then Stabler gives Craig and three quick little kisses and says, if Tooth shot that kid, it's because he had to. Why are we acting like it's crazy that an innocent bystander got shot during a firefight in a teeny tiny bodega? Yeah. I don't get that this is the focus in the beginning. I don't. I don't. There was a little piece of salt on Craig's lip and he was like, did you have a vessel <laughs> earlier? <laughs> Ryan, I don't eat as many potatoes as you'd think O'Halloran pops his wee head in. <laughs> Yay, he found a security camera tape. Cragen tells him to send it to Taru. Cragen's going to go head to the hospital and tell Stabler to stick around and find the gun that he thinks the other guy had. Mm -hmm. Because Ryan O'Halloran, he may vacuum those floors, but yeah. he's not going to find a gun. At the hospital, the press is swarming that place too. Chief Muldrew arrives, and in this scene, he talks like Dan Aykroyd. He's like, Captain Cragen, how's Detective Tutuola? <laughs> Munch, Cragen, and Muldrew are all bitching to each other about the press being concerned about the shooting and not how Toots is fighting for his life. Munch comments that the press just wants to crucify Toots. Tarubin runs in with a twin mattress, I mean VHS tape. So he ran all the way from the precinct with it. So he's super winded. Mm. He tells Cragen that he needs to watch this tape. They all watch the whole shooting. In the video, you can see the guy with the MAC-10 shoot. Then we see the guy in the sweater vest behind him take the gun out of his pocket like a little guy. Toots shoots him because he sees the gun and makes the gun that he had fly up over the cooler by the door. So like, mm -hmm. you know, it's they're like in a, a gas station, yeah. they're in a bodega, flies up on top of that thing. Munch is going to call Stabler to tell him where to find the gun. Chief Muldrew and Cragen are going to go out and address the press. They want them to know that they can quit fucking coming for Toots because now they have proof he had a reason to shoot. Yeah. The doctor comes in to tell Cragen that Toots is out of surgery. The bullet missed his lungs, so he should make a full recovery. I was worried for a second, you know? Yeah, I don't know what if it's like they're like, like, oh, this is how Toots leaves the show. Like, we know? didn't know that he has been here for the next 20 years. What if Toots had been dead this whole time and none of us knew? Oh, my God. And they woke up and it was like that movie. Oh, my God. Like Haunted. Cup. The name of this episode is Haunted. How do we know that he isn't a ghost? This is foreshadowing. This is some Taylor Swift level Easter eggs. Anyway, Cragen goes to see Toots. The first thing Toots asks is, the boy in the store? Cragen tells him, not a scratch on him. Just terrible emotional trauma that will shape the rest of his life and who he becomes. <laughs> Toots thinks he messed up by not getting his gun out before they shot the cashier. But... I mean, he's doing that what if thing. Yeah. Cragen tells him that he did everything by the book based on the security footage. Toots is in Stabler, so he's like, what? I shot two kids? What? But he did save an innocent little kid in the process. Mm. Knock, knock, knock. It's Benny. Hey, mm. bud. So you never gave me my coffee this morning? <sighs> I'm not going to pay you back for it. So... <laughs> Uh, no, she just comes in to see him. Craigan tells him that the department is there and asks if he's up to having company. Dude, all of this is so fast. Like, you were literally not about to make it. You lost so much blood. You would not be just like, hey, come on in, everybody. Like, That's no. what I was thinking, too. Like, he's this on his feet episode. in two days avenging yeah. a former victim. There's no way. Fucking hell. Five minutes ago, they were like, we can't tell if he's going to make it or not. Critical condition. Yeah. But didn't they say it, like, nicked an artery? He lost a ton of blood. Like, you don't just, like, nick yeah. an artery yeah. and, like, go to work the next day i don't know so like stabler come give it three quick sweet little kisses patch it up don't you like, want to like stitch it up mm -mm. nope it's like tinkerbell everybody's like if you clap <laughs> <laughs> so just then toots's son walks in and toots is like oh, little baby kenny there's swelly ass music benny and craig and leave ken's there to wish him well yeah turns around to leave right away he's like i'm glad you're not dead see you later and toots is sitting in his bed and he's like can you stay for a little bit ken asks him why you're not dying instead of being upset by that toots gets it he works with the best dad ever so he knows he could have been a way better father to ken yeah he does this little monologue about how he put work ahead of family and he should have done better mm -hmm. by his son ken tells him not to worry he turned out okay take care dad and he leaves toots to wonder why he's in stabes but he called him dad yeah 
You know, he called him fucking Finn when he was talking to Benny. It's true. Point two five seconds later, we're at the squad room. <laughs> Toots shows up to the precinct. Still got blood on his shirt. He doesn't care. No, he doesn't. <laughs> Everyone in there is like, hey, way to go, man. Hell, you're doing so great. Weird thumbs up. And then they're, can I have your autograph? Oh, my God. There was one dude, like, I think that one the- dude with the mustache was like, oh, just kidding, man. It's good to have you back. And I'm like, who are you? <laughs> That, no, he was a familiar face. He he's a guy that regularly oh, hands them paperwork and shit. Yes. Oh. Um, no, the first guy. I think I think he was like in his blues. He he was like, hey, welcome I, back, and like double thumbs up. The lady was like next to him. <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, it was uh, the guy who's like, hey, way to go, man. You drilled those guys. His acting was just garish in comparison. Yeah. He actually delivered that same exact line the same exact way in a in a porno fashioned after the show called Jaw in Order Special Dictums You Shut the fuck up. Is that real? <laughs> no. Oh my god, not. I was like I could see it I could see it being real. Oh my Just god. Just his acting it gave porn star yeah. to me. It gave porn storyline. Hey, <laughs> Way to go, man. You drilled those guys. Now drill me, you know, like now drill this guy. (laughs) And then the other guy with the two thumbs up fucking goes, this guy. Man, I wait, hold on. What'd you call it? SVU porn? What'd you call it? Jaw in order. (laughs) Jaw in order. Special special (laughs) dictions. That was like so real to me. I was like, I looked it up immediately. So he goes to Craig's office and Craig's like, oh, man, you're supposed to take the week off. You just got shot yesterday. <laughs> Toots says he's not staying. He just came to get some stuff from his desk. He wants to know how old the kids at the bodega were. Craig's tells him they were 16. He's like, Ugh. then a fucking woman comes in. She's screaming. She's got a newspaper in her hand. Munch is kind of blocking her from going into the squad room any farther. She says she recognized Toots from the paper. She knows him and calls him a dirty cop. This actor, if you're um, like Gen X, I guess, you might know her from playing the assistant principal in 114 episodes of Head of the Class. She also plays Chloe Sevigny's mom in Boys Don't Cry. Oh. Also, there's a clip that is kind of viral from Pineapple Express. Seth Rogen is a process server and you just like see a door open and he goes, hi there. Are you Sandra Danby? And she's Sandra Danby. Oh, she's Sandra on this too. Weird. Yeah. But anyway, she's in a lot of stuff. Yeah. But I I know as soon as I saw that she was the mom in Boys Don't Cry, I was like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Craig comes out and he's like, whoa, 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 what's happening? I'm the fucking captain. She wants to make a complaint about Toots. Then Toots comes out. I'm the fucking captain. What do you want? Like he's <laughs> head of the cheerleading squad. Yeah. I'm the fucking captain. If you think you're just going to come in here, <laughs> sit on the edge of this stage, flip cups around <laughs> and get on the squad, you are mistaken. <laughs> Me, 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 me. <laughs> <laughs> and then he starts fucking stomping. I said, burr. <laughs> it's cold in here. He's like, oh. I want the whole squad in cheerleading uniforms in a pyramid on a t-shirt. <laughs> Drew, thank you very much. And then she's like, oh, you want me, me to do a backspring, double tuck, whatever? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to make out with your brother. <laughs> My school didn't have a gymnastics team so <laughs> Okay, anyways, Toots comes out of Craigan's office and she's like, oh, do you remember me? And he's like, um, no, sorry. I feel like this is every time I go anywhere because <laughs> I can't remember anybody's fucking face. She tells him that he put a gun to her head. Mm. She's like, I'm fucking Sandra Knowles. She's like, you put a gun to my head. And Stabler's like, oh, I'm glad this wasn't me. <laughs> you would have to get way yeah. more specific than that. Yeah, it could be me. I don't know. I do it all the time. Mm. Then Toots goes, Trisha's mom. So a while back, Sandra was trying to get her daughter to leave her drug dealing boyfriend and come home with her. She says that Toots put a gun to her head and whispered in her ear, leave bitch before I kill you. And then Toots says, I didn't have a choice. I was undercover. She says, yes, you did. And you chose not to help my baby, some hero. And then she leaves. Okay, so here's the thing. Mm. It's like, I mean, I get she's upset her daughter's an addict and she wants to help her, but he cannot jeopardize an entire case by revealing he's an undercover cop. At this point, I'm like, I'm sure more will be presented, you know, but Mm. it's like, I'm sorry, your daughter's an addict. That sucks. Everybody's coming for toots and he just got shot. (laughs) Like everybody's coming for toots. He just got shot. And like, honestly, like 
none of this stuff was like his. Well, so he was, this is when he was in narcotics. So yeah. he was undercover playing a fucking drug dealer, drug kingpin, drug user, whatever. So he could be in with these traffickers and. Um, yeah, he was like working for them and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that fucking oh no no yeah. he got a job as like their security it, it goes into it he talks yeah, about it yeah. in, a, in a minute here but it's yeah. like his role in that position was to do that i mean the best thing he could have done for her is tell her like get the fuck out of here yeah you know what i mean and what's he gonna do go to her house after and be like okay pinky promise yeah. me something all right Shh, i'm a cop exactly okay your kid being a drug addict isn't your fault you know that and that sucks but like they m make their choices and it's i don't know and you only can do so much this isn't the everyday svu undercover where they're like i'm playing this girl's brother and i'm going to introduce myself and i'm john demunch for 30 seconds like no he, this is deep he had cover. To, he had to work up to be this guy's bodyguard yes. anyways we get into it okay. so it's nighttime craig and leaves his office it's all dark because that's the show and Toots is still there at the precinct. Nobody else is there. He's trying to sort out what happened with Sandra. Toots tells Craig about how back in narcotics, it used to be all about just getting drugs off the street and there were no, quote, victims, just dealers and users. Mm -hmm. This particular undercover, Simon, he had worked his way up to become a bodyguard for a coke dealer named Vance Dennis, which that name. Vance Dennis. I kind of like it. Even if you flipped it around, it's still Dennis Vance. Vance Dennis. Um, Dennis, uh, Dennis, Vance. Dennis Vance of Vance Refrigeration. <laughs> I was going to say Dennis Vance is a different guy entirely. He's a mid-level yeah. real estate agent. Yeah. So his girlfriend was Trisha, Sandra's daughter. She was 18 and didn't want to go home with her mom and had a pretty gnarly coke habit. Mm -hmm. So Trisha's mom shows up and Vance ordered Toots to make Sandra leave. Toots couldn't blow his cover, though, but he always kind of felt fucking shitty about it. I guess. Munch comes in and says there's no trace of Trisha, but he was able to track down the dealer, Vance. He's in Attica doing 20 years. This is based on info from a woman that lived in his house. And Toots is like, obviously, that's Trisha. He wants to find her. She's probably hiding out if she narked on Vance. First, he needs to find his old handler, Joey Bosco, which this fucking guy. He may know where Trisha is. Toots says that five years is a long time for Sandra not to see her kid. Craigan wants him to wait till he's 100%. I'm like, didn't he get shot like two days ago and almost died? Like, there's no way he'd be walking around. Mm -hmm. Toots doesn't care and thinks Sandra's been waiting long enough. And Craigan says, Craigan is a fucking pushover in this. That's Everybody wants exactly. some shit. Yeah. Yeah. The whole time yeah. I'm like, okay, Craigan, all it takes is a little like, like come, come on, on, dad. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. No. Like, Your kids like, are brats. Yeah. Craigan. And he's like, ah, cool, do what you got to do. As far as I'm concerned, you're still on leave. <laughs> so cut to Toots. He goes to see Bosco on the, on the Isle of Arufa. <laughs> <laughs> so cut to Toots. He goes to see Bosco on the Isle of Arufa. <laughs> he's taking photos with this insane telephoto lens. Toots asked if he remembers Trisha and asked if he flipped her. Flipped her just means like, did you get her to talk? Yeah. Without hesitation, yeah. immediately, this guy remembers her, a tangential character in a case from five years ago. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. totally. Uh-huh. A hundred percent. He is the Mary Lou Henner of the narcotics unit. He looks like Elon Musk is like stupid cousin. He looks like Elon Musk to me. Yeah, I agree. Do you know who Mary Lou Henner is? No. Okay, so she was... I think about her all the time. She was in Taxi. Um, she was Pepper McMaster's and Party Down. Like, she was hosting, a like, a singles seminar party. Anyway, she has this... Mary Lou who? Henner? Mary Lou Henner. It's called Hyperthymesia. It's oh, I love her. Superior yeah. autobiographical memory. Like, you can give her any day, any time in her entire life, and she can tell you everything about that day like it was yesterday. No she way. She can remember every second of her life. I've seen interviews with her. It's it's insane. Wild. Yeah. But anyway, so I, like, went off on a whole thing about Mary Lou Henner because this guy remembered immediately. Remember her? He should have been like, Trisha who, dude? Trisha who? Trisha fucking who? Trisha's a very <laughs> common name. Trisha who? <laughs> My sister, Trisha? So, Trisha, Trisha yeah. at the bodega? Like who? Trisha that I went to third grade with? Who are you talking about? Yeah. Trisha from that case. Oh my God. I've been in this business for 22 years. This is my life. That's like somebody being like, hey, have you ever, have you ever tattooed Steve? Yeah. <laughs> yes. S sure. 
<laughs> oh yeah, Steve. He came in with his girlfriend five years ago. They're not dating anymore. I follow him on social media now. So we talked for 30 right? seconds when he was like, yeah. no. Yeah. But anyway, this is pretend. So yeah. So he goes, uh, he, he didn't even go like, oh yeah. He was just like, Trisha? Yeah, I know Trisha. <laughs> <laughs> so after Bosco pulled toots from the case, it went kind of cold. But then Trisha was picked up mewling coke at JFK. She wasn't arrested, but she ratted out Vance. Mm. Toots asked him if they got her protection or relocated her, but Trisha didn't want protection and said she was going home. Toots gets pissed and he's like, you didn't give her protection? She risked her life for you and you left her all alone. Bosco gets all offended. He's like, dude, she made her choices and needs to live with them and tells him that SVU makes him soft. He's like, you think everybody's a victim. She was a cokehead who ratted out her boyfriend. Yeah. This guy looks like a sloth mouthed Elon Musk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A sloth mouth to Elon. <laughs> he was just like, you said everybody's a victim. The whole time, like they are on the island of Arufa, but this guy has a super zoom camera and is taking secret police photos. What's the word? It's not called stalking. He's staking something out or whatever. Yeah. But he's not even hiding. He's hanging over and it's only like two stories high. You'd see him immediately. And another guy comes up and they're loud talking about another case. They're basically yeah. yelling at each other. We're both police. Yeah. <laughs> the person he's taking pictures of is across the street like, hey, I can hear you. Hey, guys, see how I barely like, had to raise my voice to say hi. Is that toots up there? Well, well geez. Uh, well, I'll be dipped. I'll be dipping dots <laughs> in heaven. I'll be dipping dots on some guy's dick. <laughs> So Toots heads over to the prison to talk to Vance. Attica is actually under New York City, so the only lights in the room are the glow sticks that Toots brought. A guard lets Toots into a cell for chatting where Vance is sitting at a table. And, and, and he's sitting behind a DJ booth. <laughs> Vance tells him that he liked Toots better when he was Terry Brown, his very not made up sounding undercover name. He immediately refuses to tell Toots anything. Where's Trisha? I don't know. When'd you see her last? Beats me. Why are you even there? Yeah. Like, why would he tell you anything? Right. When Vance asks Toots why he's looking for her, Toots is just as sassy and goes, because I want to. <laughs> and that fucking snaky little Dennis -y Vance goes, that little coke whore put me in here. How would I know where she is or how she is? Toots is sitting across from him now and Toots grabs his arm and makes fun of his nuisance prison swastika tattoo on his forearm. Brought to you by Sharpie. Right. Fucking yeah. Just a tattoo. <laughs> Vance is trying to survive in there by joining with the Aryan Brotherhood, but Toots tells him, anybody can get got, you fucking... Bleh. You puke. You pube. You little pube. <laughs> And that whole thing, the swastika thing, the whatever, that had nothing to do with anything. Nothing. No. Vance, who talks through his teeth the whole time to a level that really made me irritated, he goes, you're a detective. Why don't you go dig her up if you want her so bad? Mm. Sounds like you do know where she is. Yeah. Toots has another stop to make to the Manhattan North Narcotics Squad. In a little Manhattan North Narcotics walk and talk, Toots tells his old supervisor, Lieutenant Pizzella, that they owe Trisha since she helped them put Vance away. This guy. I know. Oh, he's a little Richard Grieco and a little Danny Jollis. Do you know who I I'm talking about? I'm going to look them up because there was one guy that I was like, I know that he looks like this one guy, but I couldn't remember his name. Okay, on, Danny, Danny Jollis is a stand-up comedian. He plays George in Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Maybe I'm just broken. He really likes Ska and they always forget his name. But Okay, Danny Jollis. Uh, and then what's the other guy? Richard Grieco. But you have to see the when he's older. When he's young, he's like super fucking hot. And then he is older and he looks like an older man. But this guy is a mashup of those two people. Yep, he is. Thank you. With the little like hair wisps and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, Richard Grieco was a fucking babe, dude. Right? I think about him a lot just because of that Will Ferrell, Chris Catan movie, Night at the Roxbury. Oh, yeah. They were like, is that fucking Richard Grieco? <laughs> He gets yeah. out of a gets out of like a gull wing Ferrari or some shit. Okay. Okay. So yeah, he's he's walking and talking with his old supervisor, Lieutenant Pizzella. Mm. He tells Toots there's no resources to look for this girl. Cut to them most certainly looking her in the eye and saying, We'll protect you. Okay. Yeah. Toots says Vance basically admitted to killing Trisha, but Pizzella wants proof before he's going to give it any life. I mean, they've got right. a lot of cases anyway, so, like, I get that. Toots brings up all the cases he fucking smashed and how Pizzella got the credit for all of them. Mm -hmm. So this guy is craganing too, I guess, because he's like, fine, what do you want? You are correct. What do you want? Toots 
really close to this guy's face, says he wants a narc cop partner with him for a few days to check out Vance's people and try to find Trisha. Pizella spins on his heel and calls for this rookie, Detective Mike Sandoval. To which Toots is like, what the fuck, man? What about Melendez or Jamal? Those guys are gone. Little Joey Sausage? Bugsy? <laughs> Chicken George? <laughs> Tiny? Come on, man. Chicken George. Mike the Face? <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> Mike the Face is actually uh, a dude that John knows. God, this this guy up in Minneapolis. I don't know if he was a tattooer. Mike the Face, he... Picasso, anybody? Come on, <laughs> <laughs> they're all gone, all of them. Yeah. Oh, Rat Pink Frank. <laughs> I can't. Rat Pink Frank. Okay, all gone. This fresh-faced little cutie comes up and introduces himself. Detective Mike Sandoval. Hey, Mike. <laughs> Uh, he was <laughs> he was in Pretty Little Liars, The O.C., Resurrection Boulevard, Border Town, How to Get Away with Murder. He's in a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. Cutie little patootie. Little pocket cutie patootie. I love when they like showed him in a white wet t-shirt at the end. I'm like, of course you guys did that. And I right. love it. <laughs> it's in his contract. He's like, if I don't wear a dripping wet undershirt. Like there was no reason for him to. They didn't show Toots doing that. No, I was. I much. thought Toots would be dripping wet and he was not. Yeah. It was just yeah. me. No, ew. Gross. <laughs> I'm not leaving that in. That's fucking trash. Oh, come on. That's I'm... hilarious. Okay. It's just me. Come on, dude. That was good. <laughs> that was so good. On the street, seasoned cop, fresh cop, walk and talk. Sandoval tells Toots what Vance's old crew is doing now. The Murphy twins are too loyal, so Toots doesn't even want to bother with them. Sandoval suggests bugging Fat Tony's place. He's a heroin dealer now. And... Toots, who doesn't have to be such a dick, but is, says, listen, gadget boy, I don't have time to listen to fat Tony bitch for a month hoping he brings up Trisha. Let's do a buy and bust, arrest him and drag him in and sweat him. Toots can't do the buy since they know his face. And so Sandoval volunteers. I'm your guy. He's so cute and sweet and like ready to go. You know? Yeah. And it's like you can tell he looks up to Toots. We're both cops. We're going to cop together. And Toots is like, oh, I'm an old man on a porch yelling about my Gran Torino and you're fucking annoying yeah. me and I'm being racist. And that's not yeah. that, from my cold, dead hands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? I liked Fat Tony. Just the character or like the guy oh. playing him or something. I liked him. Yeah. But I was like, I know that his character was like a bad guy. Yeah. But he was just cute to me. I was like, oh, he was cute. Yeah. So Toots keeps being a dick. And he's like, no offense, you worthless little piece of shit with great teeth and hair. My grandmother wouldn't sell aspirin to you. Yeah. But they're going to try it anyway, because what else are they going to do? Don't they need clearance for this shit, by the way? Sandoval, who is a new to the squad-ish, new enough, they called him a uh, white shield, mm -hmm. in narcotics, who is going to do undercover shit or has done undercover shit, is just going to out himself to big drug dealers as a cop. Like, it's yeah. a role on Law and Order. Like, he's going to come back as somebody else we don't remember the first time. Just like Casey Novak. Yeah. Wasn't that the lady? Isn't the new ADA? Is the, she, uh, didn't, she, didn't she fucking sexually assault a guy with some other ladies? No. <laughs> like, no, there's a different like, person entirely. We, bust, we busted the case. We interviewed her. <laughs> That's like, <laughs> Right? <laughs> we're going to hit up Fat Tony. They're going to go with Sandoval. <sighs> I'm so sorry. I feel like I can't focus. You're, you're doing good. For any any other Bravo people, Tom Sandoval has been in the news so fucking much because of like this big Vanderpump Rules blow up shit. And he spent a moment as like the most hated reality dude in America and still kind of is. I think he's going to they're going to give him a redemption arc, but whatever. That's just how it works. But so anytime I say Sandoval, I picture Tom Sandoval from Vanderpump Rules. And that's only for the people who know what I'm talking about. Everybody else, you don't it doesn't matter and you don't care and it serves no purpose. But that's just anybody who's listening to this, anybody who watches Bravo is doing the same thing. Okay. Sandoval goes undercover. They're going to go okay. get Fat Tony. Fat Tony is hanging at the basketball courts. So he's sitting on this bench. There's some dudes playing a game. Sandoval walks right through this pickup game. And these guys are like, what are you doing? What are you? What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, he's got his hood up and he's like stumbling. They like shove him. Get yeah. out the court. We're all in swooshy shorts and shit. Get the fuck out of here with your jeans and hoodie. There was one guy wearing jeans and I was like, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Sandoval heads over to Fat Tony and acts super familiar. And Fat Tony's like, do I fucking know you, guy? And he's like, yeah, Jose's cousin, the guy with the funny hat, which sounds like a thing a cop would say. But Fat Tony is like, yeah, yeah he does have a funny hat. <laughs> yeah, that was really weird. 
know. Sandoval asked Tony to help him out. He's like, help me out. I'm hurting. Obviously acting like he needs a fix. You know, he's like, come on, man. Just, you you know, my cousin and whatever. Putting it on. And he's doing good. He's believable. Yeah. Fat Tony's like, all right, what do you want? Sandoval tells him he hands over this crumpled wad of money. Tony slips him a little baggie and this dude's like, thanks a ton, Fat Tony. I'm going to hold it up like it's a not totally illegal thing to have here. Oh, I forgot to give you a hug. <laughs> he was yeah. He was like kind of strung out, but then kind of like really excited. I just loved this guy all around. Yeah. And Tony's like, fuck off, dude. Get out of here. We're not friends. Yeah. Then he just goes back to trying to finish his snack when Toot sidles up behind him and interrupts Tony's hot dog. He goes, uh-huh. long time no see. But he's a mensch because he's like, I'm I'm going to let you finish your hot dog. Yeah. That was the important part to me. He's like, I may not be able to save this lady's daughter, but you're going to finish that hot dog. I'm not going to make <laughs> the same mistake twice. <laughs> so now we're at the narcotics precinct behind the glass where nothing is happening. They're just hanging out watching this. Mm -hmm. Sandoval tries to go in to sweat fucking fat Tony, but Toots shuts him down and says he's going to do it. And then the kid's like, don't shut me out. (laughs) It was so funny. Toots tells fat Tony that he sucks now. (laughs) He used to be a big deal. Used to have kids running his shit for him. And now he's sitting there slinging dope on his own. Yeah. Like some small time corner guy. Eating a hot dog. So Fat Tony says, all this is is a cop with the fucking grudge, planting drugs on a dude in the park, enjoying the sunny day. I'll only get like a fucking night in jail. That's it. Toots says that he won't have to spend any time in jail if he tells him what happened to Trisha. (laughs) Fat Tony calls Trisha a fucking coked out slut. And he's like, oh, Toots, you like him young, huh? Young and strung out? Fucking Toots slaps him. (laughs) It was crazy. Full on. Open hand. I was going to say unprovoked, but it you went to 100, Toots. You, that was a stabler. Oh, yeah. Well, he would have already been at 99 just walking in there. He would have kicked the door in and shot the guy in the chest. <laughs> and been like, where's Trisha? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but he slaps this dude in the face. Yeah, so I'm like, damn, Toots. And then Fat Tony goes, mm, mm, mm. police <laughs> brutality. My lawyer's going to love this. She's going to file a million dollar lawsuit. What did you think Fat Tony was going to do with a slap to the face he barely even turned his head yeah and he's like i am a hardened street youth no he's not young i'm a i'm a hardened dude selling dope i've seen people killed i've probably killed people i've been in fucking all kinds of fights i've been shot i've sewed up my own wound and you fucking slap me in the face and think i'm gonna give a shit and not see the opportunity in it yeah right so sandoval comes in and says before you start spending your money you should listen to this. Turns out they randomly have had a wire on him for weeks. Mm. This is so bananas to me. I'm like, what? In his car, in his house, lying. everywhere. Oh, he was? He's lying. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I was like, oh, no. He is Am just- I gullible? T- yeah. Am I gullible the past two days? I, th- I thought about the fucking SVU p- penis dictums thing. And I was like, oh my God, is that real? And then I didn't even catch that he was lying. So he comes in. I was like, why would they have, why would they do that? He doesn't. I know. Well, he comes in with a wire and he's like, we've had this on you for weeks. We have this, we have this, we have this. So you go ahead or we can fucking blah, blah, blah and move on. Yeah. And so this was just the first of many times that he's like, look at me, toots. I have value. I just yeah. fucking walked in and saved your ass. See, because it pans to toots face like what? And I was like, oh, he didn't know that they had him bugged either. <laughs> oh, no, no. It panned to toots yeah. face because toots was like, like, whoa, maybe you aren't a worthless little piece of shit. Yeah. I'm still going to treat you like one for a while, though. Yeah. Yeah, all the, quote, transactions he's made in the past three weeks could get up to about 10 to 15 years in prison. Mm -hmm. So then Fat Tony's like, oh, shit, and asks if the deal is still on the table. Toots tells him to start talking. He tells him Vance knew Trisha ratted him out, so he sent the Murphy twins. I got to see these Murphy. I'm I'm assuming they're like Tom Hardy, both Tom Hardy. The Murphy twins? Yeah, they're like some Irish Tom Hardy. What is that movie where he's twins? That's what I was thinking of. They look You're exactly like, like my those dreams. Guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know, but I've never seen it, but I've been wa- I've wanted to. I have I think about it occasionally where I'm like, I gotta watch that movie. Where he's Let's dancing see. and his brother's like, fucking stop. Okay. <laughs> Legend. Legend. I love fucking Tom Hardy. He's so hot. Okay. He tells him that Vance knew Trisha ratted him out, so he sent the Murphy twins to pay Trisha a visit. He heard that they took her to a warehouse and gave her a quote hot shot, and the cops all treated it like just another junkie OD'd. 
Do you know what a hot shot is? Yeah, they just like OD for her. Usually, it's yeah, like a deadly amount of heroin. It's or an OD, but they usually like it's got something else in it, not just heroin. Mm-hmm. It used to be that it would have like strychnine in it. You know, they would cut mm-hmm. it with. Uh, but now it tends to be fentanyl. That's nuts. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Toots and Sandoval go to tell Sandra what happened. This is Trisha's mom. Remember. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all in Coroner Warner's office. Sandra wants to know why she wasn't contacted. Toots tells her it's because there was no way to identify Trisha. They didn't know it was her until today. Sandra wants to know how they can be sure what if Fat Tony was lying, which is a possibility, you know. But Coroner Warner shows Sandra some of the personal effects from the death. One is a piece of jewelry that Sandra recognizes as a present she gave to Trisha when she took her first communion. Mm. I'm like, "Mm -mm, she would have sold that shit. She would have sold that shit. She would not have Mm -hmm. that. She would not have that. No. Nothing has meaning when you're an addict. Like things don't have value. That's why fucking addicts do things that are outside of their normal character. Right. So Corner Warner tells her that they can exhume Trisha's body from the city grave she was buried in. Toos tells her he's super sorry, but she puts her hand up and cuts him off and tells him that it's too late and she leaves. He's getting so much, man, I don't know about this. I don't know. I mean, her anger makes sense to me. It's misplaced, but... Yeah. Sandoval asks Corner Warner if there's any way to prove the injection was given by force. There was no evidence in the report at the time they found her, but she's going to check the body herself when it comes in. Toots is convinced that they won't get a murder charge just based on info from Fat Tony. They need to find more leads. Corner Warner tells them that Trisha also had a partially healed C-section scar at the time of death so fucking sandra might have a fucking grandkid out there at first i was like why didn't you lead with that and then i was like well you know you don't want to tell yeah sandra that and give her hope Mm -hmm. that might not be there so now we're at the city cemetery on heart island toots goes to the exhumation corner warner tells him he didn't have to go but he wanted to she tells him some really interesting facts about heart island's uh history you guys should fucking google that shit there's been a ton of shit that's yeah yeah. did you google it i went and read a bunch about it yeah really interesting Mm -hmm. so corrections is there with prisoners they help exhume trisha's casket the cop tells them to lower the casket down easy and they absolutely do not they just like drop it and walk away and nobody says anything and i was like okay it's raining and it's like pretty dramatic yeah when corner warner is holding the umbrella and she's like toots you didn't have to come dude he's like yeah i did and in real life someone would go here let me carry that like here he just grabs it He just snatches it and she's like, okay, I guess we're walking under this umbrella that you're holding now. Okay. I wonder if it was like, I'm a man and you're a woman and I should be holding it for you type of a thing. I was wondering that when I watched it. That's what it feels like. Yeah. But I'm also going to critique that shit hard. Yeah. Later at the precinct, I'm guessing it's late because Toots is the only one there. The fact that it's dark tells us nothing, but he's Mm -hmm. alone. It could be noon. Who Who knows? knows? Who knows? Yeah. It could be high noon. The lighting in New York City is wild. (laughs) Toots is at his desk on the computer and Craig and pops through the door like fucking Kramer. He doesn't actually, but when I was first watching it, that's what I saw. I saw him come in like, (laughs) but he really just kind of walked in. Craigan lets him know that Corner Warner filled him in about Trisha giving birth and Toots tells him he wants to find that fucking baby. Craigan orders him to turn the case over to missing persons, but Toots doesn't wanna. What am I supposed to tell Trisha's mom? Craig is like, you're too close to the case. But no, Toots won't turn his back on Trisha again. He says one sentence and Craig <laughs> is sold by that for some reason. <laughs> yes. And is going to allow it. He tells Toots to call if he needs help. <laughs> Toots was shot 45 minutes ago. He's like, go home. And he's like, no. He's like, all right, I'm not going to go home again. <laughs> all right. All right. Call me if you need anything. I'm here for you. (laughs) I'm actually not only going to turn a blind eye, I'm going to offer my services at any small need that you have. (laughs) I'm here to enable you. (laughs) Toots and his new best friend, Detective Mike Sandoval. Hey, Mike. Go to to find Novak. Toots asks her for help finding Trisha's baby and says he's helping narcotics. He didn't give her the real information. Novak's got to run, but says she's going to fax the subpoena over for the records. Easy peasy. Right? Bye, Mike. Mm -hmm. She leaves. (laughs) <laughs> sorry she was real smiley i was like i don't think i've ever seen her smile maybe she just won a case she, she like shook mike's hand was like nice to meet you and i was like what yeah. I don't know, i've seen i've never seen your teeth before <laughs> sandoval calls him out for telling novak that he's helping narcotics with a case he's like you're not helping me i'm helping you what do you mean why did you tell her that 
<laughs> Toots is like, dude, I didn't want her knowing that I'm working off the books. She asked too many questions. You know, women, right? Mm. Sandoval tells him he's playing fast and loose because he feels guilty about Trisha. Fast and loose was my nickname in high school. Toots does not like Sandoval talking really at all and barks at him, which Sandoval seems totally fine with and straight tells him Trisha Knowles died because you screwed up. I was like, no. Fucking bold. That was, yeah. That's not why she died. But that's a fucking. She died because people murdered her. Yes. Toots gets inside of his mouth and tells Sandoval's uvula that he is taking the chance to make things right. You can fuck off or you can tag along. And Sandoval just responds by suggesting they go to the hospital. I just wanted to fucking be an asshole to you. Okay? Yeah. I'm still coming. That whole fucking trope of like the young guy, new guy thing is so boring to me and old. It's like, stop. Mm -hmm. We get it. And then you're going to fucking like each other later. Okay, got it. He proved himself. I'm a seasoned detective. You know what? He still has some things to teach me. Hmm. I guess this old dog can learn new tricks. (laughs) I'll walk you down the aisle at your wedding. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's like, (laughs) chill out. (laughs) At Mercy General Hospital, this doctor, Dr. Aiken, appears twice. Then she's two other people. She's also been in seven episodes as four people in Law & Order Regular. Mm. The doctor tells them about how Trisha came in high as shit in her second trimester, but this doctor dragged the shit out of her and it made Trisha clean up. The baby was born healthy and his name is Austin. The doctor last saw them six months ago. So Trisha was coming in regularly for well visits and stuff. When the last appointment card went out, it came back with moved, no forwarding address stamped on the front. The doctor had told Trisha to go back home to her mom, but Trisha was convinced she could make it on her own. And she had a job as a waitress. So two and Sandoval go to speak with the owner of the diner that Trisha worked at. I love this guy. He's so cute. Oh my god. I, He's pouring I, him coffee. Listen to this. Hang on. I can't believe she's dead. Such a good girl. <laughs> this guy yeah. This guy talked like uh, Mario from Super Mario. He's like, I can't he believe does. she's dead. Such a good girl. Like, that's what I imagine <laughs> Mario talks like. Actually, Mario's yeah. like, it's a me, Mario. But this guy's like, <laughs> Trisha was a real good girl. Oh, you know <laughs> yeah. what? Who taught... I can't believe she's dead. Such a good girl. That's a that's a fucking Simpsons character that I can't think of right now. Oh yeah, I, know he, I, know he, I think he's about. I think he's a detective. Ugh. I'm gonna I'm gonna find out. Okay, so he says that she left early one day last spring and never came back. Her roommate went to go pick up baby Austin for her. Toots is like, what Austin? Was here all the time? Yeah, so he was there every day at the diner. The owner's mother watched him upstairs. She loved him. The day Trisha left, she asked her roommate to get the baby and bring him to her mother's due to a family emergency. The roommate's name is Lizzie Jones. Trisha got her a job there, but she was rude and shorted the busboys on tips, and he thinks that she was high. Toots gets mad that the owner let the roommate take the baby if he thought she was high, and the guy's like, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. I'm sorry. The owner asks if something happened to Austin, but Sandoval tells him that that's what they're trying to find out. He asks where they can find Lizzie. He says maybe in Yonkers, her and Trisha grew up there together. So now we're at Sandra's house, Trisha's mom. Sandra is like, yeah, of course I know her. She used to live across the street. Trisha and Lizzie went to school together and she kind of makes Lizzie sound like a bad influence. Trisha thought Lizzie was super cool when Lizzie started smoking, Trisha would. When Lizzie started cutting school, Trisha would and getting tattoos and all that stuff. When Sandra found out Lizzie started doing drugs, she tried to separate them, but they ran away together. Sandra says that last month she ran into Lizzie's mom who told her that Lizzie was in rehab. Sandra starts to get suspicious and wants to know if Lizzie was involved in Trisha's murder. Sandoval tells her that they don't know she wants to know why they're looking for her then. Toots tells Sandra about baby Austin. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh my God, a grandchild. Sandoval mentions that they think Lizzie might have him. Fucking Toots promises her that he's going to find Austin. I'm like, fucking don't do that. Stop mm. doing that. Yeah. Outside of the house, Sandoval is fucking pissed that Toots promised to find Austin. Correctly. Yes. Toots says he has a good feeling about the case, which means nothing. I got a good feeling about this one. Yeah. Well, great. Sandoval tells him he has post-shooting trauma and starts to go in on like what it means and whatever. And Toots cuts him off. Yeah. Have you ever killed anybody? Sandoval hasn't, of course. Toots snaps and tells him, once you have, then you can tell me how I should feel. 
Toot says they need to find the rehab facility Lizzie is at. I just loved how it was such a quick turn to Toots is like, don't reference psychological studies that may shed some light on my current behavior. Now let's go check <laughs> out this place that might lead to taking my guilt away. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. You're doing the thing that he said you were doing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then Sandoval's like, yeah, sure, let's go. So Sandoval knows it's in the Bronx, but he doesn't think they'll tell him jack shit because of confidentiality stuff. But he does have an informant who was in the program Lizzie was in. They could pay them to get the info. At the park, Sandoval's informant, the bird lady from Home Alone 2, tells them about Lizzie. <laughs> Is that bad? <laughs> no, that was funny. My head went straight to Craig's face on the bird lady. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this informant telling these guys about Lizzie. So it turns out Lizzie backslid in the program and the informant has seen her at the park buying drugs. She buys from Crazy Jim. Transition. Crazy Jim. He's a dude chilling by a tree with his electric guitar and amp set up. He tells him that he hasn't sold to her recently. She has a new boyfriend named TD. He's a dealer. But these fellas are in luck. Because TD told Crazy Jim. Him, he'd be coming around with some great new product pretty soon. Lizzie still comes around, quote, when she's working. Mm. Transition <laughs> to some other park regular. Lizzie is a booster. She steals anything that isn't nailed down. He tells him that he's never seen her without the baby because she uses this kid like a gimmick and the stroller gets treated like a shopping cart. Mm -hmm. Transition. Elsewhere in the park, a lady separating recycling tells him Lizzie lives with TD. This lady's been there to pick up a TV that Lizzie got her, so she knows knows where that is. Toots and mm -hmm. Sandoval pay her to give them the address. What a productive visit to the park. Yes. Toots and Sandoval find the house and talk about TD and how to approach the place as they stand in front of it. They I had know. to have driven at least 40 minutes together. Okay, I checked. Mm -hmm. This is why my notes take so long. 40 <laughs> minutes in the car and you guys didn't discuss this? Let's wait yeah. until we're standing on the sidewalk with Toots and a mock turtleneck and hoodie to figure <laughs> our shit out. Anyway. Right. You should have figured this out in like 15, 20 minutes, gone over it again, and then either sat in silence or asked about each other's families for the next 20 minutes. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, I can imagine Toots being like, I'm not much of a talker and then sitting there quietly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're standing in front of this house being like, so how are we going to do this? What do you think we should do? Police. <laughs> anyway, this dude is T.D. Beeman. TD has been to jail before for possession and selling. So they plan to knock on the door and ask for Lizzie because that's allowed if someone has a record, I guess. I don't know. So they're like, yeah, we don't have to do anything weird. We can just like go knock on the door. So mm -hmm. Toots does. There's no movement inside when he knocks. So Sandoval suggests that they go around back. Maybe they'll spot something for some probable cause. Huh? As they head around the house, Toots goes, this place is a dump, which one made me laugh. And two, the fact that he said that was to point out that it was weird that there was a pole cam yeah. set up in the back. Music. He's like, what's with the fucking camera? What's with the security pole cam? You know that this guy is a drug dealer, is a criminal yeah. and a drug dealer. Like, of course, he's got a fucking pole cam regardless. Yeah. Sandoval's about to go up the stairs. Toots is in super cop mode. So he sees the fucking tripwire set up on the steps. Oh, no. Sandoval hits it. But right before the explosion, Toots dives in slow motion to knock him out of the way. Yeah. Hey, Mike. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> so now responders arrive. There's fucking EMS and all that shit. Toots is kind of rotating his shoulder, ugh, you know, because he just had surgery 32 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. They came straight from his surgery to this fucking house. Yeah. He's still wearing that tiny circle sticker from when they gave him a shot in the arm. Yeah. Sandoval tells Toots to get checked by EMS, but he doesn't want to because they'll send him home. Because, hello. Wow. <laughs> Sandoval is like super worried about Lizzie or the baby being inside. Toots tells Sandoval that he didn't booby trap the house. It's not his fault. He's like, yeah, but I tripped it. And it's like, You're, it's fine. You didn't do this. Toots wants to know what the fuck is in that house that it's wired. He must have something to hide. No shit. No shit. <laughs> God damn it. Maybe we should check with Ryan Jig City DJ's O'Halloran. <laughs> <laughs> There's shrapnel in the woods super close by where Sandoval was standing, and he's super lucky. Like, one more step or lean in, he could have gotten fucking sliced. The fire department says that nobody was inside. Toots and Sandoval go in. They had meth cooking supplies, but not the chemicals. The lab's got to be someplace else. Now we're at the crime lab. Sandoval and Toots go over the meth cooking process that TD maybe used 
coal meds, red phosphorus from the matchbooks. There was like a ton of matchbooks and some other chemicals. <laughs> it was really funny how Sandoval was like, and then he puts it in this tube and then it goes down this tube and then here you, you know, and I was like, you're okay. cooking with fish grease now. You got yourself some meth. <laughs> Yeah. Since stores limit the sale of these cold meds, like Sudafed and stuff that has like ephedrine in it, right? Mm -hmm. They limit it to one box per customer. So they have to shoplift from a lot of stores. That's why TD needs Lizzie. They need to search the reports for stolen cold meds. Then they can narrow down where Lizzie hits usually and then maybe where the lab is. All that stuff's behind the counter now, right? Um, Or it's in locked like cages. Yeah, because I think they have to scan your ID if you buy one. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yeah. You can't just get it anymore. No. Oh, absolutely not. Back at the precinct, Toots walks into Cragen's office. Cragen's not happy. I heard about the explosion. What in the absolute hellscape that is my past, which I only (laughs) occasionally touch on, is going on here? (laughs) Yeah. That's, yeah. Toots minimizes it (laughs) and just says a rookie got ahead of himself. Which is like, dude, fucking chill. This guy is fucking crushing it as your special walk on partner. And you're not only treating him like shit, but you're kind of shitting on him too. Like, he's done a lot. Yeah. A rookie got ahead of himself. I mean, I get it that you have a whatever. I just didn't love that. That you saw a tripwire that he didn't. And he was doing the thing that you guys were going to do. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to walk up the stairs. And guess what? Yeah, you've got stuff to learn from him, but he's going to learn a few things from you along the way too, bud. <laughs> Toots tells Cragen he needs help and explains that Lizzie is stealing shit for meth because she and her boyfriend are gonna fucking Walter White pretty soon. Like, they got a cook yeah. planned. He gives them the list of the larcenies from the area, but he doesn't have the specifics of what was stolen. He mm. only wants to know about cold pills. Cragen jumps up from his seat to get everyone on it, to make each individual call. Like, he didn't just tell Toots to let it go yesterday. Mm, yeah. We're gonna track it. I've got everybody on the phones. Fuck all these sex crimes. We're gonna figure this out together. All of us. We're all yeah. best friends. Yeah, I mean, this is the... And then we're going to let you know the results as soon as we know anything. (laughs) This is the first time we see, like... Anybody else. Stabler, besides Benson and Munch. And we and, saw yeah. ben- Benson in the beginning for like 10 seconds. Yeah. Well, no, stay, but we saw Stabler at the hospital giving Benny a hug and oh, being like, right. hey, you're great still. Yeah. It's like when you go get coffee, I don't give a fuck at all. I, I leave sometimes. <laughs> you could totally get shot. I wouldn't have come in. I wouldn't have. Gunshot sounds like fireworks to me. Yes, he would have. He would have been like, I'm going to murder someone. I'm looking for every opportunity. <laughs> yeah. He would have jumped through the window. <laughs> like, there's a door. I heard a gunshot and they're like, I just closed the door really hard. <laughs> It's like bullshit. Pew, 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 pew. Sorry, you're dead. Later, Munch, Benny, and Stabes, who all have a pile of cases, are on the phones finding info on stolen cold pills. The hits are all marked on a map of the Bronx with little stickers. Their organizational skills were so cute. Like, I know. Stabler's like, I got another one. And he goes and puts a little round garage sale sticker up on this little map. Mm hmm. There are 13 hits in Kingsbridge, which is where the house was. At Raleigh's Mini Market, Toots T-1000, do you know this boy? Asked the store clerk. (laughs) You recognize this girl? (laughs) The kid who is... Not only in the middle of fixing a slushy machine, but is also just being realistic, says, do you know how many people come in here, man? It was the first time in any cop procedural that a person told the truth and acted like a regular human. That is a real life answer. Yeah. But Toots is like, we are not IRL. We are on a TV cop show. So I'm mad now. He comes around the corner, snatches the kid up and shoves the photo in his face. He's fucking serious. He's like, you remember now? Okay, fine, this kid says. I didn't just pee a little, and I do recognize this girl. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, she was in here early. (laughs) It's like, she was in here earlier looking like a total crack hoe. It's misogynistic. It's bullshit. It's it's fucking generalizing people who struggle with addiction. It's so fucking annoying. But Mm -hmm. this is how they refer to her. Sandoval pops up from the other side of the counter and tells Toots the cold med shelf is completely bare. The clerk is like, ah, geez, you guys, my boss is gonna kill me. I wasn't paying attention and they stole all the Sudafed. Toots shakes the shit out of this kid a little bit more. So this kid tells Toots about his conversation that he now fully remembers with Trisha. She had asked this kid if there were any auto supply stores nearby. Oh, ding-a-ling-a-ling. Sandoval knows, because he knows how to make meth. She needs starter fluid for the ether for that sweet, sweet meth. The kid tells them where he sent her. Later, 
Sandoval and Toots spot Lizzie at the auto supply store. She's coming out with a bunch of bags. They fucking hop out of the car and Toots asks her where the baby is. Who is she? She looks familiar. I know you did it. Yeah. I know you did it. This is her first of four SVU appearances. This is Leanne from Orange is the New Black. She's one of the main characters. So it wasn't like a side person or whatever. She's one of the main characters. She hung out with, what, what did they call her? Pensatucky? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. It was like her and another gal and they followed Red. They were like part of her little lackey crew and she had a whole backstory and everything. So she was in a ton yeah. of episodes. Yeah. Oh, okay. They get out of the car. Toots asks her where the baby is. She pretends to not know what they're talking about and tells him to ask Trisha. Toots is like, you know, she's fucking dead. Fuck you for selling out Trisha and trying to sell her kid. Mm. And she's like, I didn't do it. Get off me. Sandoval gets in her face and says, you you reek. I can smell the stink of death all over you. You want to kill yourself? You go right you ahead. You reek. You reek. <laughs> He's like hot breath whispering at her up against a fence. He's like, he's like, you want to kill yourself? Go right ahead. But you're not going to take that little boy down with you. Now tell me where he is. And we're all like, damn, Mike. Mm-hmm. She tells him that he's with TD at his sister Paula's house where he cooks. And then Sandoval arrests Lizzie for petty larceny. That didn't seem too petty to me. She's going to make math. Math. Okay. Oh, for the stealing. Yeah. Outside of Paula's house, she runs a fucking daycare. Mm. There's fucking, there could be kids inside. Sandoval does not want to go in. He's scared that they could breathe in the gases from the cook and die. They got to call for fucking whatever to get hazmat and stuff. Paula comes out of the house with a bunch of kids. They're all coughing and crying. Toots is like, I can smell the meth. <laughs> it smells like bergamot. <laughs> and lavender i gotta let that joke die <laughs> the kids are all holding that rope you know how they do when they're like little kids mm-hmm. at least telling them to shut up and stuff Ugh. but the kids are all older than austin so he's probably still inside uh, toots wants to go in and he doesn't give a shit sandoval still wants to wait for hazmat stuff and then toots says screw hazmat and they go in some kids are fucking napping oh my yeah. god so fucking sad and sandoval's like come on guys be quiet let's go toots goes into the kitchen and he finds td and austin is sitting in a carrier on the counter toots draws his gun and td's like you're not gonna shoot me this place is gonna fucking explode and he's got a pot of some chemical shit toots tells him that he just wants austin td's like what do you want austin for what does it have to do with anything i'm literally cooking meth and you just want this baby yeah i have a pot of meth stuff in my hand it's burning <laughs> messed up i'm gonna stir this real quick if you don't keep stirring it it curdles <laughs> it's like a roux <laughs> td says that trish is dead and toots is like i know duh just fucking give me the baby you think i found you looking for this baby and i didn't know that trish is dead yeah td will not give him austin and tells him to back off because the shit in the pot will melt his face off then you see like sandoval kind of sneak in through a door behind him mm-hmm. td's threatening with this pot and demands to be able to walk out sandoval grabs austin like grabs the car seat from behind td yep and then toots punches td and knocks him out sandoval's all proud of himself he's like i got the baby like hey mm-hmm. now you're gonna know i'm good and toots looks at him and goes What took you so long? Yeah. Sandoval deflated a little bit because he basically just said, hey, Mike, your dad will never be proud of you. (laughs) (laughs) Just like, I'm not proud of you. I'm your dad. (laughs) So now it's a crime scene, obviously. The responders are there. Hazmat's there. TD is arrested and he's being dragged out of the house and he's like, screw you. Screw all of you. Why does anybody ever say that? So stupid. He's like, you have no idea who you're messing with. And fucking Hazmat is going in in suits and shit. Toots and Sandoval have to rinse off in these chemical shower things. Yeah. It just shows Sandoval taking a shower and getting wet and turning around and like slowly walking towards the camera and smiling. And his tank top is tank top. What is it called? His (laughs) undershirt is fucking wet and white. And he actually just like me, (laughs) wet and white. (laughs) He did a slow motion Bo Derek and flipped his braids back. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. He had really long island braids. He went on a cruise with his family and Jeremy in between busting the place and having to take this hazmat shower. So then it cuts over to Toots, who's not wet at all, and Mm -hmm. um, the baby who has a towel but is not wet. No. I know your hairs didn't dry like that, but okay. Toots has the baby and tells Sandoval that he did a good job. Oh, that's all he ever wanted. And then Sandoval's like, uh, uh, thank you. (laughs) Um... (laughs) 
Sandra shows up, uh, but they won't let her pass the tape. She says Toots called her and told her that he found Austin. Craigan's like, all right, all right, come with. They're being decontaminated. What? Well, she's freaking out for a minute. And then she like scream. Craigan walks by and she screams for him. Oh, she's that's like, right. Captain yeah. Craigan. And she's like, my grandbaby. You know, and I mm-hmm. fucking get that. Your daughter yeah, died definitely. and this is your grandchild you're going to meet for the first time. And it's like mm-hmm. fucking meth all over me. I don't give a shit. I'm going to get in there to that yeah. kid. So Craigan kind of brings him over to him. They're a little bit of a distance. And Toots shows Austin to her and the camera on his face he's making the dumbest face i'm so glad that when i sent you that like you saw it because i was like no i knew he was like yeah i can't i can't describe it we'll i will post something yeah look at the baby Uh, he's like oh you see her he's mouthing that's grandma (laughs) yeah (laughs) so sandra is so happy and she like mouths thank you and toot smiles back oh and then I wrote, okay, but like not to be a downer, but Toots' face looks so dumb. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> Toyota, that's it. Uh, Toyota. Let's just crank this shit out. Yeah. Crank that soldier boy. Oh. That soldier boy. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Superman, those hoes. All right. I'm going to tell you a recent story in a sec, but I went down a meth rabbit hole and I'm dragging you with me because just any kind of history is interesting, right? Yeah. I think so. Okay. So there was a surge of meth labs in use in the late 90s, early aughts. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I know. (laughs) <laughs> Methamphetamine was first synthesized by a Japanese chemist in the late 1800s. And like most of the big old Schedule One drugs, it was initially used for medical purposes. It was used to treat narcolepsy, asthma, nasal congestion, as well as obviously a weight loss aid. Crystal meth was a version made in 1919 when another Japanese chemist was like, man, making meth is super hard. I should make it easier. Not knowing he was setting this shit up to be cooked in motel rooms and daycares and shit yeah in world war ii german soldiers were issued pills consisting of crystal meth and cocaine to keep them awake japanese kamikaze soldiers were fucking pumped full of it before missions Mm -hmm. um have you heard the term nazi meth Mm -mm. so instead of using red phosphorus which was one of the chemicals that was used initially to make it they were able to use and hydrous ammonia, which is mm. fertilizer, to get the same effect. So, like, that's how the Germans made it for okay. the soldiers, right? And all of this is, like, breaking down to be where all of these things are accessible for somebody to cook in a motorhome. Yeah. It was popular in the biker community in the 60s. And by 1970, it was made illegal in the U.S., after side effects became well documented. These effects included paranoia, hallucinations, delusions, abnormal heartbeat, death. Symptoms can mimic those of schizophrenia. Okay. Physical signs include severe weight loss, meth mouth, where your teeth rot out, mm. skin problems, sores, uh, usually from picking and scratching your skin. Because another common effect is you can feel like there are bugs crawling over and under your skin. And at times you can even hallucinate that with enough lack of sleep and enough over intake of the drug. Mm-hmm. And I knew people who were fucking pickers, man. Not everybody is, but. So the surge of meth use in the U.S. happens between 94 and 2004. In the 2006 United Nations World Drug Report, it was called the most abused hard drug on earth. Mm. And as the chemical ingredients became harder to acquire because the powers that be were trying to rein it in, people would find alternatives like the fucking fertilizer and shit. Another example is ephedrine, which is a pharmaceutical chemical, was replaced with pseudoephedrine, which is in cold medicine. Pseudoephed, yeah. Yep. And that's why you get carded when you have a cold and you need pseudoephed or whatever. Mm -hmm. They track that shit too. That's how authorities have busted multiple meth labs. They keep track of Mm -hmm. how much of this shit you buy, Mm -hmm. which makes sense then why they hire runners and addicts. You go to different stores, but they're tracking your ID and shit god remember that movie spun oh that was so yes bad. dude yeah fucking mickey rourke as a cook and britney murphy as her girlfriend god i haven't watched that in so long so good anyway the timing of the surge is why it was included in our favorite rip from the headlines police procedural it was right in the middle of things being absolutely bonkers with mm-hmm. meth cooking meth is absolutely insane the culture of it is unlike any other drug sales walter white is not making it okay it's home cooks building labs with hot plates tubes fucking Mm -hmm. pickle jars empty bottles of jack daniels it's not fancy when these cooks get busted or a lab explodes it's never like any other dealer bust they're not finding 
piles of money in mansions with Bentleys parked out front. You know, it's trailers, Mm -hmm. motels, rural country. Mm -hmm. It defies logic as far as like selling Mm -hmm. drugs and all that goes. You know what I found out? Cooking meth is super fucking dangerous. Oh, really? Hot hot take. (laughs) Hot take. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Not a safe choice. Because of the chemicals used, okay? The toxic fumes can kill a person if the room's not ventilated enough. People have been mid-cook and been found just dead. Uh, A meth lab explosion is caused by ether getting set on fire, which is a main component of cooking meth. Mm -hmm. What did I read somewhere? That if a gallon of ether is set on fire and it causes an explosion, the, the size of the explosion is like five sticks of dynamite. Wow. The residual toxins, everything that's left over, seeped Mm -hmm. into the walls and the air and the carpet, everything can cause health problems long after a cook. People find out their house was once used to cook meth because they'll test for this shit and be like, I've never even seen that drug. I read this one thing where this pregnant woman tested positive for meth and was like, this is fucking nuts. Like, I've never Mm -hmm. done drugs in my life or whatever. They tested the house and found out that it had been used as a cookhouse before they bought the house. Oh my god, that's like yeah, mini nuclear, you know, like nuclear waste yeah. almost like how it hangs out. Not for like yeah. 900 years or anything, but... It's still, I mean, for it to affect a family, I don't know how mm. long they had owned the house. I just read this little thing about this family, but... That's scary. So when the surge was happening, people were getting their homes tested and shit. Mm-hmm. And it was wild how often people found things. Cleanup for one busted lab can cost like 20 grand. Just the I mean. hazmat suit guys coming in and cleaning that shit up. Anyway, I just lived for reading all of this because I didn't, you know, when I was like, I'm going to do fucking drugs. I wasn't like, I should find out the history on this. And, oh, a Japanese chemist. So that was just a little bit of that because they were talking about meth in the episode. But the chaser I want to give you is about a current modern day drug that's out of hand that's fucking up people's lives. It's very, very recent, 2023. I'm going to tell you about this IRL daycare drug house situation. Okay. I don't want to tell you about it because I hate that it happened, but people are garbage and here we are. On September 15th, 2023, fucking few months ago, uh-huh. 36-year-old daycare owner Gree Mendez called 911. Four small children in her daycare had by her description, fallen ill and were unresponsive. All of the children were between the ages of eight months and two years. Based on symptoms the children showed, first responders administered Narcan, the drug used to revive opioid overdose. Oh, yeah. They were rushed to a nearby hospital in the Bronx. The fourth child, 22-month-old Nicholas Dominici, was unable to be resuscitated and passed away. (gasps) His cause of death was determined to be acute fentanyl intoxication, mm. and the ME declared it a homicide. Oh, my God. I've heard of fentanyl. It's like a pain medication, right? Yeah. I mean, it's used for pain relief, but like the very, very, very smallest amount can cause you to overdose. Like it is so temperament. It, is, it takes almost nothing. What do right? doctors even use it for then? They use it. I mean, when my dad fell, when he got hurt a couple weeks ago, they gave him fentanyl at the- Like is it a pill? At the emergency room. like a room. drip? I think they can do it like in a shot and a drip. It's very meticulously measured out. But when people are selling it, like street selling it, usually they'll- add it to heroin so that they can cut it more. So like, let's say you have a tiny bit of fentanyl and you have a kilo of, I'm not going to know the measurements, but a a kilo of fucking heroin and you're going to sell that heroin. So what are you going to do? You're not going to sell pure heroin. You're going to fucking stomp on it. Right. So you're adding all the shit that they add, whatever fucking baby formula. Why would they add another that? drug that they can sell? Why wouldn't they just add like, I don't know, baby powder or whatever the fuck people do? Because they can make it go further. So you're actually making the heroin a little bit, quote, better so you can sell it for more. You're not even making better hair. You're just diluting the heroin so much that you have so much more product. And then it's like, still good heroin because we're fucking... Oh, okay. So you're they're diluting it with something else and then adding a little bit of fentanyl so it's still good. Okay, I get it. And so and they're not they don't know what they're fucking doing. They're not chemists. Mm-hmm. And so people overdose on this shit, not even knowing they're doing it. Mm-hmm. I've heard of that. Anyways. Ugh. So Nicholas's death was declared a homicide. There was going to be a police investigation regardless, right? Mm -hmm. So when Mm -hmm. the police went through the house, they found a kilo of fentanyl and drug presses in a closet, meaning so they were the drug presses that they had. There's ones that make pills, you know, that press powders. Like when you make buttons, like there's like a. Yeah, kind of like that, but not as crafty and cute. And then there's ones that press it into kilos, like bigger packages, right? 
So they had those. Later, they also found a trap door in the floor under a child's padded sleep mat. Ew. With six kilos of fentanyl laced heroin along with other drugs. There was other shit under there. But it was, I mean, kilos of heroin with fentanyl in it. They said that these kids very likely as in they did not ingest these drugs. Okay. It can also enter the bloodstream through inhalation and Mm -hmm. skin absorption, especially when you're little and you're near that much of it. Oh, my God. These kids were right above it on these sleep mats. It was in the closet sitting on top of stuff for the kids. Oh, my God. That's fucking disgusting. Four people ended up being arrested, including Mendez, the daycare owner who phone records later showed called her husband, 36-year-old Felix Herrera Garcia, to tell him the kids appeared to be ODing before calling 911. Garcia fled to Mexico, but was found within a week and arrested as well. Also arrested was 41-year-old Carlisto Acevedo Brito, Garcia's cousin. The three were arraigned in October, literally a few months ago, arraigned in Mm -hmm. October. Charges included second degree murder, criminal possession of a controlled substance, manslaughter, assault and child endangerment. Not only that, but there is a separate federal case against the three defendants with charges of narcotics possession with intent to distribute resulting in death and conspiracy to distribute narcotics resulting in death. There's also something in there about depraved indifference on the daycare Mm -hmm. owner because of her phone call made Mm -hmm. prior to calling 911. The fourth defendant, Rennie Antonio Para Paredes, is charged in federal court with conspiracy to distribute narcotics. Now, that's his only charge, so I'm just assuming he wasn't there or he wasn't staying there, but he was maybe a partner in their drug ring. Mm -hmm. Mendez pled not guilty and claimed she was unaware that this drug operation was being run by her cousin, who she rented a room to, Brito. Uh, Mm -hmm. One of the arrested. Even though she like called her husband, but okay. Yeah. She's like, oh my God, I had no idea this was happening. And that's being argued by authorities because Garcia kept her own kid out of the daycare to avoid fentanyl exposure. Her cousin, Brito, also pled not guilty. DA Carcel Clark said, quote, this was not really a daycare center. This was a drug operation. They used babies as a shield, which gave me fucking chills when I read that. It's just. Yeah awful. The most recent news on this were the not guilty pleas and the defendants are being held without bail and awaiting trial. So Mm. they're getting all their shit together. I mean, they're all looking at life in prison. And these poor parents. Yeah, that's fucking awful. Of this little, not even two year old little boy. Oh, but yeah, people are garbage. Yeah, that's it. Well, (sighs) next week we have season six, episode 11, contagious a little girl is examined after a car wreck and it turns out she was sexually abused and they Mm -hmm. find out that her abuser maybe killed a kid i like i said i never go too far into the descriptions because i don't want to trigger any memories of the episodes but it's a kid one so cool see you then awesome (sighs) rate and review us email us at svupod at gmail.com if you want to send us anything please do at p.o box 176 deforest wisconsin 53532 follow us on all social media instagram tiktok etc at svupod get pod merch and more at svupod.com join the facebook group svupod elite squad we have a facebook group chat called walk and talk and there's a facebook book club that somebody started called single tomato hashtag little bit loud to find all your indie pods and if you are an indie pod and want people to find you hashtag a little bit loud and then yeah. join the patreon we have so much fucking content it's not even funny it's there's a lot on the patreon there's mm-hmm. so much like it's crazy because like we're always feeling guilty that we're not doing enough but then we give like hour and a half two hour episodes i was gonna say it's we've been doing longer episodes lately and i'm like this is too much nobody wants this yeah so i don't know check it out check it out yeah so call uh, or text us leave us your questions stories and comments send me ghost stories if you want some real shitty advice from a couple of dumb bitches if that's what you want if that's what you like um, the number is 1-920-345-7005. Again, the number is 1-920-345-7005. Thanks, guys. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Craig and I say we're just trying to plow and press <laughs> won't. <laughs> Isn't this indecent exposure? And they're like, let them finish. <laughs> They'll stop when right. they're done. <laughs> and then being like, do you want to swing through and pick up my buddy? Munch. Just kidding. He's doing detective research. <sighs> that wasn't good. Just kidding. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's eating his wife's babies. Aw. <laughs> Sandra shows up um, around the table. Sanders. She's like, oh my God. Did I say Sanders? Oh. Ned Flanders <laughs> shows up. <laughs>
Hi, diddly ho, Meth House Arena. And to our Elite Squad patrons, Sonia W, Marissa M, Elki H, Mary D, Andrew, Rebecca D, Miranda B, Shelby W, Lex, Emily T, Mallory G, Bonita R, Marin, Vanessa, Melanie G, Courtney W, Ursula S, Kate H, Kate P, Jessica S, Nikki M, Katarina G, Danielle W, Jenna M, Joshua H, Tammy J, Blair, Blair. Crystal, Lucy M, Trisha S, Sam D, Mac Attack, Casey W, Abby W, Alexis J, Lauren T, Kaylin B, Camille Z, Nisha G, Maggie D, K. Allen, K. Allen, Eliza W, Crystal B, Jessica P, Zana J, Nada M, Sin, Madison H, Emily. Oh, you do, you do those. Oh. <laughs> It was almost like you knew because my thing this week was just going to be Emily. Oh, really? Yes. I'm not even kidding. I was like, Emily. Oh, shit. Tasha does this. <laughs> That's so I funny. Know. You accidentally. I know, yeah. right? Victoria B, Scout G, Melissa M, Desiree D, Drew B, Monica K, Katie S, Brenna T, Natasha S, Andrea H, L H, Nikki R, uh, Aunt Sarah, <laughs> Caitlin S, Emily D, Kate H, Lexi Y, Vern, Jenna B, Catherine B, Ariana, Madeline K, Meg M, Andrea M, Nikki B, Mallory J, and Lem. Thanks, guys. Thanks for Thank thanks for you. letting us do all this and supporting us, and it's really cool. And thanks for letting us burrow into your ear holes. <laughs> you <laughs> go to the ear, nose, and throat doctor. Okay, I'm gonna go. All right, love you. I love you. Mm-hmm.